Mr. Jonathan Bell. Marvin Michaels, everybody, put it together for Marvin Michaels one more time. Yeah. What's happening in New Orleans? Where are my locals at? Locals? Yeah. How about them saints, huh? It's weird though, I've been a Saints fan my whole life, and it's always been, oh, you're a Saints fan kind of thing. Now it's a bandwagon thing everybody's jumping on. I don't like it, folks. I don't like it. I've had season tickets for years. I'm not, not enjoying it. You know, the last time the Saints were this popular was during the Crusades. So, it's kind of weird, that being the case. But I am from here. I love being from here. It's weird, though. I've been on the road a lot recently talking to people. They have no idea what's going on here now. And it's, it's kind of frustrating. People want to help, but for example, a couple of weeks ago, I'm doing a show in Chicago, talking with a guy after the show, and I'm telling him how we're rebuilding, how difficult it is, and he says, oh yeah, man, I understand exactly what you're talking about. My wife has a list of things for me to do this long. I'm like, really, sir, really? You, you want to compare the two? You, th you think your list is long? You should see my honey-do list. Number one, get the upside down Honda Civic out of the living room, so. <laughs> number two, rebuild the house. You know when rebuild the house is number two on your list of things to do? Got a lot of shit coming, that's, that's all I'm saying. It was funny though, because uh, right after the storm or whatever, uh, President Bush said the reason for the four day government delay, the reason it took him four days to get down here, was he didn't know it was that serious. <laughs> didn't know it was that serious. Folks, let me tell you something. If NOPD is actually fighting crime, it's pretty serious, what do you say? <laughs> yes. It's awesome. Yeah, President Bush, you see those 10,000 inmates on I-10? They're not supposed to be there. <laughs> that is not the world's largest cleanup crew. So ridiculous. Right after the storm, the rescue crews were going door to door, trying to save people. They happened to get to my house and chop down my front door, which is fine. Hey, you got to do what you got to do, save people. But then two months later, FEMA calls. They say, Mr. Bell, this is FEMA. Oh, we see you've applied for disaster assistance, and we need to come out to your property to survey the damage. Will you be there on Tuesday to let us in? I'm thinking, funny story about that, FEMA. Uh, I don't have a door, so you can go ahead and let yourself in on that one. Then they said, oh no, Mr. Bell, you have to be there for security purposes. I'm like, security purposes? What do you mean to make sure the inspector guy doesn't steal anything? And they said, yeah, pretty much. I said, I'll tell you what, FEMA, if the inspector really wants my Hooters t-shirt that sat in sewage for three weeks, Please, by all means, let him take it. Deduct it off my taxes at the end of the year. Should be a nice $15 addition to my bottom line. It's one thing Katrina didn't help out with was my credit. I mean, my credit was bad enough before the storm. Say the average American credit score is 678. Yeah, 678. Yeah, mine's close, mine's a five. So, fits right into that sequence there. It was frustrating though, right after the storm, I, I said, okay, I'm going to start over again, start from scratch, I'm going to get another house. So I go to the bank, go, get, go to get a loan, sit down with the mortgage guy, he looks at me, looks at my credit report, looks back at me and says, sir, we couldn't get you a loan on Barbie's dream house. So, <laughs> he was kind of a dick, actually. I know hindsight is always 2020, but uh, when I evacuated, I only took three t-shirts, that's all I took. And uh, if I had it to do over again, I'd have taken my porn. And uh, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, why on earth would you take your porn? I'll tell you why, folks. Because had I known that strangers were going to be walking around my living room a couple of days later, I'd have made sure that copy of Big Booty Hose Volume 7 was off the TV. It's just a little thing. I don't know. It's 
crazy though. It was it was weird because when I evacuated, I actually took the time to put towels down underneath every door, and I closed every door. I swear to God, closed every door in the house, put towels down. Yeah, because I figured, hey, if we get a couple inches of water, I'm gonna be the smart guy on the block. Yeah. <laughs> Two days after the storm, I'm sitting at a shelter in Memphis. And they have hurricane coverage on the TVs running CNN. CNN sends a helicopter down my street in Lakeview and the water is up to the roof. I look at the guy sitting next to me, I'm like, uh, boy, I'm really glad I put those towels down. <laughs> Otherwise, I might have gotten a little bit of water. Oh, man, let me tell you folks something. Holiday and towels don't soak up shit, okay? That's all I'm saying. I'll leave y'all with this. A lot of stuff has changed since the storm. A lot of stuff has. Some of it's changed for the worse. But one change in my life has been the greatest change ever. And that is dirty talk with my girlfriend is so much easier now. Getting her in the mood, so much easier. Before the storm, I had to do everything. Flowers, mood music, be nice, all kind of things. Ever since the storm, it's so easy to get her in the mood. All I have to do is lean in and whisper. Hey, baby, uh, sheetrock is on sale at Home Depot this week. <laughs> Thank y'all. Y'all been great. Thank you. Enjoy, Jeremy. Keep it going for Mr. Jonathan Bell. Very funny.